All right. So I have my research hypothesis, which is saying that I think that my experimental group is going to show results after using my meditation app that there is less than a 5% chance that I would see purely by coincidence if I was comparing them to the general population or to a control group. Okay. This is the logic behind what we are doing here. And we refer to this as statistically significant. It's statistically significant at the 0.05 level. It's statistically significant at the 0.01 level. Now your textbook explains where Z scores come into play here. Because basically what you're doing is collecting the Z scores of the participants of your experimental group and seeing where they fall on your distribution of your general population, your control group. And what you're trying to do is to see, are they getting results that would be way over here in the tails where it's unlikely that it's by chance alone, right? And your that part, your textbook does explain clearly. It's just the introduction to the logic behind this that I didn't really care for how they did it. Okay. So one more time, null hypothesis, nothing is affecting anything. Control group, group that's not getting anything. Research hypothesis, the thing that I'm doing is affecting something. That first population, the experimental group that's being exposed to the thing that I'm doing. You're using my app, okay? Research hypothesis, my experimental group is going to be different than my control group. How am I gonna test this? I'm going to test this by showing if the null hypothesis was true and there was no difference between these groups, the numbers that I'm seeing would happen less than 5% of the time purely by chance or coincidence, okay? Hopefully all that makes sense. The last thing that your book gets into is the idea of one-tailed versus two-tailed test. It's a discussion that's worth having theoretically, but know that most researchers and statisticians use two-tailed tests. One-tailed tests are pretty unlikely. It's used in some of like the, the medical sciences. I think your textbook gives the example to sometimes in neurology. Um, it's unusual in behavioral sciences. And the reason is we always allow room for results, well, there's two reasons actually. One being we always allow room for results to move in the opposite direction than we're expecting. The example of the meditation app. I'm expecting results to move in the direction of, you use the app, you sleep better, right? It reduces your insomnia symptoms. Maybe the results come back showing the people who use the app were not sleeping better. In fact, they were sleeping worse. They were having more insomnia. They were staying awake longer. Maybe sitting and doing the meditation and clearing their mind brought to mind a bunch of other things they wanted to think about. I haven't thought about in a while how I can start repairing that relationship with my sister, how I could, whatever. This brought to mind how tense I've been because I'm dissatisfied with work. So now I'm going to lay in bed thinking about what are my solutions to this, right? There is always that possibility. Um, we have a new drug for, for depression and we assume people who are taking this are going to see an improvement in their depression, but we also want to allow room for it to go the other way of maybe there's a ton of side effects and maybe those side effects actually make their depression worse because now they don't feel good. Um, so the two tailed test allows us that, that cushion for results could go in the opposite way of what I'm expecting. And I still have the ability to interpret those results and do something with those results instead of just excluding them because I'm only looking at one direction. The other thing is it just creates more conservative statistics. Getting, doing a two-tailed test makes it harder to achieve statistical significance than doing a one-tailed test. And your textbook does a, does a great job explaining the numbers behind that and how that works. So you have a much better chance as a researcher of being able to confidently say, I achieved, achieved significance, these results were not by chance, in doing a two-tailed test versus a one-tailed test. One -tailed test. It's more statistically rigorous. Hopefully that's cleared some of this up.